Thank you, Jesus. You are the way. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the truth. And Lord, we are celebrating that truth. We are celebrating your life in us. We are celebrating the way that you have shown to us, the way of eternal life. We know certainly that our Redeemer lives. No matter what, oh God, life may bring me through at us. We know that you are alive and we know that you will come for us. We know that you will give us victory. And so, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for this service. Thank you for the leaves of life. Thank you for birthday celebrations. Thank you for celebration of life. Thank you. We we'll just bless you. Have your way. Bless us, O oh God, right now. Let your word come with simplicity. Let it come with grace. Let it come, Lord, with mercy. Let it come with power. And let it give us life. Let it give us enlightenment, O oh God. I just ask that, Lord, you will touch everyone right now. Blessed be your name, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I hope you can hear me clearly. God bless you. I welcome you all to this um, Sunday service. I would like to say a big thank you um, for joining us last Sunday on Mother's Day. And also a wonderful thank you to all our mothers in the house who uh, pulled that program successfully. I also thank the technical crew and my very wonderful ministers behind the scene always. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I would like to uh, share with you what the Lord again has been laying in my heart for a few weeks past now. Um, today, uh, we'll be doing a series on uh, Fortify Your Life, um, which you popularly call the armor of God, putting on the armor of God. But we have been addressing this from a very different uh, uh, perspective. So today, we uh, will be sharing together the topic is shielded against flaming arrows. Shielded against flaming arrows. That, of course, we uh, let you know that we'll be talking about the shield of faith. And so I will read um, Ephesians chapter 6, which is uh, uh, our uh, focus uh, Bible passage. Ephesians 6, 14 to 16. Stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And verse 16. Above all, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil war. We'll focus on that verse for the next 20 minutes. Above all, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish, which you can quench, with which you can deflect or defend against the flaming arrows of the evil ones. Other translation calls it uh, fiery darts or arrows of the enemy. And I'm sure you are familiar with that. All right. So we have done helmet of salvation. We've done blessed spirit of righteousness. We've done belt of truth. We have done feet protected by the gospel. And today we are talking about the shield of faith. And I will be rounding off next week with the sword of the spirit. Hallelujah. And last Sunday, it was the peace. I mean, two Sundays ago, it was peace through the storm, which was the, 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 the shoe of peace that we talked about. Hallelujah. So today, 
um, from Ephesians 6, verse 16, it says, Above all, take the shield of faith. And I will discuss this topic in theory aspects. Number one is the ceremonial shield. Two is the battle shield. And the three, the shield of faith, which is the main point that we'll be rounding up with. So there are three types of shield. One is ceremonial. Second one is battle. And the third one is what is called scripturally the shield of faith. Hallelujah. Ceremonial, battle shield, and then faith shield. Hallelujah. All right. So all this, uh, number one, the ceremonial shield will just be a form of history and a brief Bible study. All right. So uh, this particular shield is for public parades and for ceremonies. It's just a small equipment. No, it's not too big. You can see uh, it is decorated with uh, all kinds of uh, engravings. You know, it's a shiny kind of materials. You know, it's beautiful to see, but it's never used for battle. It is not for protection. You know, it doesn't protect the soldiers that, that carry those kind of shit. It's not designed for, but it's just for a show. <laughs> It's just for a show. Although this was not the shield that Paul was referring to when he talks about the shield of faith, sadly, this is the shield that many Christians are carrying around for protection. Very sad. You know, faith of many Christians is like a shield decorated with uh, many engravings of, of their work, and they just parade it around within the walls for people to see, you know, it is what I call the coffee fit. Coffee fit or let's sit around the table, sip coffee. As far as everything is working well, we are just enjoying ourselves. This is similar to the Roman soldier who sat around the camp bragging about what he would do at the battle, but died immediately in the battle because he did not have the right equipment. Okay. For example, Peter in the Bible, Peter acted faith while he, he was with Jesus. You know, he walked in faith, performed miracles while being at the side of Jesus. He even bragged that he would go to jail or even die for Christ. But when Christ was arrested, Peter's response demonstrated that his faith was not as strong as he had thought it was. You know, and you will, you will know that there are plenty of Christians, as far as we are in church, you know, all of us do a lot of pretense. Everybody will be big heart, you know, everybody want to prove that you know how to pray very well. You can teach Bible study. <laughs> you know, that is indoor, indoor faith. In the faith, but when you go out there, when time comes, trial comes, it will prove, it will test what you have been doing inside. And look, the book of Proverbs says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Because in this world, there will be adversity, there will be tribulations. As far as you are here, Arrows will be thrown at you. It will be thrown at you, whether we like it or not. Number two, it's called the battle shield. The shield that the Roman soldiers carrying into battle were actually shaped like doors. It's wide and it's long. If I want you to take particular attention to the pictures, it just explains everything I'm trying to say. You can see it's big enough. If I saw as big as covering the entire soldier from top to bottom. So those of you who, walk, who watch very classic films about those um, you know, movies, you will know how they fight. So this battle ready sheet attached to a small chip 
on his loin bed when it was not in use. It's constantly there. You know, I told you that the bed of truth also fasting other, other armor, right? So the shield is hung, you know, on the belt. It has to be somewhere. So this kept the shield readily at hand in case the soldier needed it very quickly. Number three is the shield of faith. The shield of faith, which is for battle. So it is similar to number two. That is where Paul draw that metaphor from. But spiritually, it is called the shield of faith. What it means is that your faith is a shield. Faith is a shield. Today, I know that we are taught to use faith for material gains. But go through the Bible very well. It's for defense. It's for, it's for you to be able to go through life's challenges because the enemy will come attacking at any time. Shield of faith. Paul said in addition to everything else you have put on, you must put on the shield of faith. It's a must. The shield of faith is your protection against the enemy and should be with you everywhere you go. None of this armor should be left. You have to hold it. That was says above all. Take up the shield of faith. What do you do with the shield of faith? You use it to defend. You need it to quench. You, you use it to extinguish all flaming arrows. All arrows will come. What are arrows? Worries. Enemy will throw fear at you. The enemy will throw anxiety at you. He can throw it through your children. He can throw it through your finances. He can throw arrow of anything to any aspect of your life. He can throw it against the nation and disturb your peace. Arrows are flying everywhere spiritually. And it is very dangerous for you to walk a bear without putting your faith on as a shield. That's why the Bible says, it says, take up your faith. You have to take it. It is your responsibility. In some translations, it says, in all circumstances, no matter what you are going through, make sure you take up your faith. Some says, above everything else, you have to put on the shield of faith. Why? A discouraged, a wounded, worried, fearful, hopeless, and sick soldier cannot fight valiantly. So if you allow the enemy to discourage you, you're already discouraged. You can't advance in life now. If you are wounded, if your faith, if your, if your finances are wounded, if you are sick practically, if you are afraid of life, you can't you can fight valiantly. You can't even defend yourself. You will lose sleep. In those days, soldiers were given the responsibility to take care of their shield. It's a responsibility. They will oil it. They will make sure everything is strong. Everything is fasting to get that. They tender it. It is a responsibility. If they fail to take care of their shield every day, their shield could fail them, leading to them being killed. It's like you carry a shield that is not strong or the knots are losing and you want to defend the heat it once and then it's broken. Of course, that is very dangerous. So you don't go to the battle without taking care of your shield. And they do it daily. And the encouragement is for you to take care of your shield. What is your shield? Your faith. You are to take care of your faith. Because the shield is the symbol of your faith. And how do you take care of your faith? We need the power of the Holy Spirit anointing. We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit on daily basis. We need the fresh power of God to strengthen our faith every day. Every day. 
That's why you cannot lose reading the word of God because faith only comes by hearing the word of the Lord. Two ways you can take care of your shit is by reading the word of God and by prayer. If it will not come through any other thing. Mm -mm. Strong free from testimony cannot be too strong, but it comes. You generate faith when you read the word of God and when you pray. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. So if you are not, if you say, I don't have faith, I don't have faith, go and read the word of God. Another thing I want you to do is that you have to learn how to defend your faith. The Bible says fight the good fight of faith. Hold on to it. <laughs> Another version says, do everything to protect your faith. Because that is all you have. That is all God has given to you. If you lose it, you can't advance. You can't fight. In fact, this is the kind of fight that, that, that God has approved. This is the fight of faith. That means you have to learn to trust God in all circumstances. That is the only way you can quench. You can stop being being anxious. You must also learn to exercise your faith. People don't want to exercise your faith until God forces it on them. You have to learn how to take a leap. Because if you don't take a step forward, how are you going to know whether God will help you or not? So Thessalonians 1 verse 3 says, We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as is right, because your faith is what is growing abundantly. So faith grows. You have to learn how to exercise your faith. Faith is like muscle. If you don't exercise it, your muscle will not grow. And I also want you to know in 1 Timothy 6 verse 12, the Bible says faith is a profession. It's a profession. Why? If it is a profession, it means that you have to learn. It's a discipline. A lawyer has to be trained as a lawyer. You understand? You go to school. It's a discipline. You have to sit tight and read to pass. And you will be examined. You will do examination. Faith will always be tried. It's not by mouth. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. A day is coming. That love will be tried. Something will happen to prove whether you... You actually love God. So it's not just saying it. It's not just we are in church and everybody is wearing hat. <laughs> Life will try your faith. And that is why that, and that is the only way it can be exercised. Hallelujah. I want you to know that your faith will not disappoint you. <laughs> this thing we call faith. It doesn't disappoint Maybe it will surprise you to know that it is written there. Look at Romans 5 verse 5. It says, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. Another Bible passion says, for he is faithful to do what he has promised he will do. The one who has promised you that he will defend you is faithful. It cannot fail. Faith does not fail. Perfect rendition of faith will not disappoint you. The Bible says, those who trust in the Lord shall not be put to shame. So some people say faith is a risk. Who told you that faith is a risk? It's not a risk. It is certain that you will win. Faith always wins. Faith doesn't fail. So rely on God no matter what the situation is now. You understand? You have to be able to trust God to say, if it doesn't work, let me die. And that is when you will know that uh, he's there and you will never die because we have passed from death to life. Brothers and sisters, your faith is enough to win. The faith you have now is enough. Oh, my faith is small. My faith is small. What did Jesus say? If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this problem, Move from here and it will move. Jesus said so. I didn't say so. 
You understand? So what Jesus was practically telling them is that you don't need big faith. Whatever small one you have now is enough to move any mountain because God will never try you above what you can, above your faith. He won't do that. He will not give you something that will make you fail. He doesn't do that. That would be unjust of him. He hasn't given you the strength. Then he wants to bring one big problem that is above you. No. It also means that whatever you are going through, it means that you already have the strength to overcome. And that's why you cannot fail. Faith is a gift. If you think that you don't have any at all, God will give you one today, today. Because faith is given, is a gift from God. Jude 1 verse 3 says, Faith was given to the holy people. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 9 says, The same spirit gives great faith to another. Hebrews 12 verse 2, it says, Jesus is the author and the perfecter of our faith. Auto means is the source of our faith. So if Jesus is the source, it means that he will help you to, to have faith. So all you need to do is ask. Ask. Why? I mean, Luke 17 verse 5. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. They requested. Mark 9 verse 24. You know that man. He said, please, Lord, I believe, you, but my faith is small. It cannot carry me. Please help my unbelief. Did Jesus help the unbelief? Yes, he did. He healed the boy. So God will help you to suffer for the faith. And at the level you need it to overcome all circumstances and quench the flaming arrows that are being hurled against you. So just learn how to ask, increase my faith. Everyone that asks in the Bible, they receive. God help them. They never failed. Lastly, I want you to know that God is your shield himself. God is your faith. The Bible says, Happy are thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of your help. God is the shield of your help. Genesis 15, he told Abraham, I am your shield. That's why you can't fail now. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope you are encouraged. Whatever you are going through now, you will come out valiantly. You will come out valiantly because God himself is that shield that you are carrying. God himself is your faith. Just know that faith doesn't fail. I know you have, you have been told several times it will fail. <laughs> if it's very small, it will, it's just, it will still win. It will still win because God is there to support you. Don't be afraid of anything, brothers and sisters. Don't be afraid. Whatever you have now, use it. If you think you don't have, ask for it. And you will never fail. And I declare upon your life today, today, you are defended. You are shielded from all struggles. Today, you, are, you have won. You have won. You are a winner. And so don't quit. Don't stop crying. Stop being jittery. Stop being anxious. You are already a winner because God is your shield and He has shielded you from all the flaming arrows of the enemy. Keep calm in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll be back shortly. So bless you. God bless you. For the glory. Thank you for the service today. Thank you because we know that you are our faith. We know that you are our shield. We now know that you are covering us from the flaming arrows, from the fiery darts of the enemy. We just want to bless you. And I'm asking God that everyone who has been hit by any form of arrow, I pray, Lord God, that you will heal right now in the name of Jesus. I pray anywhere you are wounded, be past, present, and even in the future, I pray that you are covered right now. You are healed right now in the name of Jesus. Some people are still carrying some arrows in their marriages. It's still there. You are still carrying some arrows that a friend has shot at you. You are still pain. You are still very hot. 
I remove it right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray that the Lord will heal you in those aspects in the name of Jesus. Some people, the enemy has shot you know, a very fiery one against your finances. You have been strong in these days. But actually, I pray that the Lord will remove that arrow from your finances and your bank will break open again in the name of Jesus. Some people, you are very, very sick because you had a dream and uh, something pierced you. You wake up, it became real. Today, it is healed in Jesus' name. We remove such arrows. I will remove the poisons from your body, from your marriage, from the lives of your children. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are healed. You are healed. And today, I hand you over to God. The shield of God himself will cover you. We cover your family. We cover your finances. We cover your job. In the name of Jesus, you won't be hit again. Lord, we give you victory in any area that you're fighting, you're struggling right now. Receive victory, receive victory, receive victory in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray that the Lord will bless your offering. He will bless your tithe. You will never have to borrow. You always have much to spend. Your pocket will not run dry and the enemy will not drill holes in your pocket in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord go with you. You come back on Sunday rejoicing. Glory be to your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Thank you for joining us. And God bless you. Hallelujah. Lately, it seems that we are getting more and more confused about what a church actually is. So let's take some time to set the record straight. A church is not a building, though a building can be used by a church. A church is not a denomination, though a set of beliefs should be important to a church. Church is not about Sunday, though a church should not forsake meeting together. Church is not about one person or personality, though every church should be pastored. And church is not about size or growth, though every church is called to make disciples. So don't think of church as an address or a location, but rather think of church as mobile and on the move. Don't think of church as something built or planted, but rather think of church as something deployed. Don't think of church as where you are for an hour each week, but rather what you are every day of the week, because the church is the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Feet shouldn't sit still. Hands shouldn't be idle. Feet go. Hands do. This is the church. Church isn't what you're sitting through right now, because you are the church. Now go and be the church.